Good morning and welcome to worship for Sunday the 5th of July from Tillicutri Parish Church Manse. Wherever you are this day, we are glad that you have joined us as we still ourselves to acknowledge the presence of God who is always with us. Let us pray. Lord, we know the words, come unto me, and we long to come, to rest in your presence, to trust in your faithfulness, to enjoy your love. We know all these things are possible because we have experienced them before because we know from others that they have found them to be so, and yet it's hard. Forgive us, O Lord, that we so often fail to accept from you the things that we long for and know we need. We are stubborn and independent. We believe that we are stronger in our own strength. We are forgetful of what you have done in the past, and don't realise what you can do in our present and our future, if you be will only let you. As we sit in our homes now with familiar things around us, help us to settle, to lay down the worries and struggles and distractions and hear the words again. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. 
come unto me and rest. As we come to Christ, let us bring the words he gave us to draw us yet nearer to God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear the word of God as it's found in Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 11, reading from verse 16 to 19, and then from 25 to 30. To what can I compare this generation? They're like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others, we played the pipe for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say, here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. At this time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Life is perplexing, isn't it? Here we are in early July, with almost a quarter of the year that has passed without us going very far from our own homes, if at all. We've done as we've been told. We've kept our set, ourselves and our neighbours, our families and our friends, safe by our actions, or rather, our inaction. Over the past few weeks, things have begun to change again, as, they, as we knew they would. And that's providing another struggle for us. This time, the struggle to keep following the rules when we see freedom looming and when we see others flaunting the rules and moving on with their lives. For many, the temptation has been too great and we have seen the consequences in scenes that have worried us of queues and crowds and people standing too close. For many people, it's been hard not to react to those scenes. It's been almost impossible to keep our lips firmly closed. And yet it is critically important that we do. We've seen the eruption of justified rage transformed into violence on our streets and frustration boiling over into murderous anger. It is important that we as individuals don't fuel that. But it is hard, isn't it? I think that the Apostle Paul summed up our very real current dilemma in his ancient letter to the church at Rome, describing the inner conflict that he experienced between what he should do and what he wanted to do. He said this, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. 
but what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it's sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep doing. We need to curb the desire to vent our frustration and seek instead peaceable and calm ways of communicating what we believe and how that affects the world around us. For me, watching scenes of overcrowded beaches and hearing crowds of people much larger than should be gathering, seeing scenes of hundreds gathering without masks and shoulder to shoulder to protest, even about acceptably justifiable causes, causes anger to boil up in me. It makes me want to shout and scream and say, have we come this far for nothing? But I don't. Some might say that I'm wrong, that I should challenge. And maybe they're right, but I see it differently. I believe that as a Christian, God demands responsibility of me and calls me to account for how I live and the choices I make. That makes me responsible for myself and responsible to others, not responsible for their actions. I can't make anyone else behave the way I want to. I can only seek to set an example. Paul was anxious that he keep doing the wrong things because it was easier and he struggled to do the right things instead. And that's what we are being asked to do at present too. Not to go with the herd, but to keep doing what will keep us safe and protect others too. The words of Matthew's Gospel offer us a way to do that. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus' listeners would have been familiar with the concept of the yoke in a way that might pass us by. In his time, oxen were yoked in pairs and they worked together, sharing the load and the strain. Jesus challenges us to put on the yoke. But we don't need to choose who our working partner will be, for he is already in harness and is waiting to share the load with us. As you travel through the coming days and weeks, as we prepare for life to change again and again, in those moments where anger or frustration threaten to boil over, remember that Christ is at your side and allow him to carry the load so that you can take a breather and find your rest to continue to live responsible for yourself and responsible to others. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we have spent time in your presence this day and sought to find rest and hope and comfort. As we step away from this sacred time, help us to understand that we don't have to leave you behind. We can continue to enjoy your companionship in our daily living. In that assurance, help us to accept your yoke, that we may walk side by side with you and know your rest. 
In these days, some folk are more rested than they've been in a long time. They've had time and space to lay down their usual loads and find a new rhythm of life. We pray for them that as they pick up more responsibilities once more, they would find ways to retain the space for rest and leisure. For some people, this has been a time when rest and isolation have been imposed on them in ways they found very difficult to bear. We give you thanks for the ways in which others have helped them. And we pray that as life changes, they will not be forgotten. For others, this has been an incredibly difficult and stressful time. For those who have contracted the virus and are still recovering, and may continue to carry the physical burden for some time or forever. For those who have been bereaved and have been unable to mark treasured lives in familiar ways. For those who have carried the burden of care, medical and support staff in hospitals, health centres, pharmacies and care homes, and also those who have worked as carers. For those who to continue their role as key workers, have distanced themselves from their families or taken enormous risks. For those who have had to make difficult decisions and impose them. For those for whom working life has continued with constant adaptation and learning to meet need. For parents dealing with homeschooling, working from home, and now the school holidays with some uncertainty of what lies at the end. For young people wondering about a future which has begun in a way different to anything they could have imagined, and thousands whose livelihoods are at risk, and those who are struggling to make ends meet and often failing. For millions of people, some known personally to us, others unknown, who are struggling with the ordinary and the extraordinary challenges of life. Lord, to each of them, you gently whisper, come to me. We entrust them to your loving care that they might hear the words and heed them and find a way to walk alongside you that changes how they live and how they see the world and gives them the rest that you alone can offer. Amen.
As you begin this new week, may you know that you don't have to step out alone, nor in your own strength. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, rest upon and remain with you today and always. Amen. And be great.